In a world where hypnosis marketers have gone crazy, one man is here to deliver a knockout, bone-crushing blow, and strip away all of the marketing hype and bull... And now, you're in on the best-kept secret in the field. You're listening to the Hypnosis Product Reviews Podcast. Leaving only cold, hard facts, point blank. No questions asked. Subscribe to the newsletter to get 12 training products absolutely free from the world's top trainers, such as Stephen Brooks, Jonathan Chase, Igor Ledahovsky, Jeffrey Stevens, Daniel Jones, Richard Nongard, John Overderf, the Head Hackers, Anthony Jackwin, and much more. Aloha, folks. It's Antonio with HypnosisProductReviews.com. Today, I'm interviewing my friend and colleague, Ken Guzzo from California, about his upcoming talk at HypnoThoughts Live. And like I tell everybody, it's become kind of my branding. I tell everybody that I love hypnosis, and I'm pretty much everyone has my hypnotist shirt. It's the definition... I don't know if you can actually read it. It says, uh, what is a hypnotist? It goes all the way through, and it's like, this guy. I actually stole that one from, what is his name? Rory. Rory from, Rory, that's it. Hey, Ken, Anthony. how's it going, buddy? Hey, Antonio, how you doing? I'm good. I was wondering what you're doing. I'm like, I'm like is he hiding from the camera? You can't be that shy. Uh, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the first time I met Ken was at HypnoThoughts Live um, 2014. Awesome mm-hmm. guy. Didn't get too much time to talk to him, but very, um, very funny guy. And very polite. So I, uh, hear, I hear you're from Canada, right? That, sorry about that. No, I hear you're from Canada, right? Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Oh, yeah. Okay, now I got the joke. <laughs> it was funny. Did you see my interview or when I was interviewing uh, Anthony Cools? I did see that one. Yes, I did. Yeah, the little, little debauchery at his finest. Yeah, the, <laughs> the finger foot. <laughs> Forgot about that. He, uh, I remember at one point he 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 did something. He's like, "Oh, sorry." It's, you guys apologize for everything. That's what I love about you guys. No, <laughs> unless, <laughs> no we're too the, unless we're on the oh, ice, oh, no apologies. Well, unless unless you're um, wait, where are you? What province are you from? I was born in Ontario, a little uh, steel town, very smelly place on the west tip of Lake Ontario, and that's where I'm from, but I've lived in Montreal, I've lived in uh, Vancouver, uh, most of my friends are in Vancouver, um, and then I took a one-year contract in Australia, moved back to Toronto, and then I was actually uh, living in Calgary, Alberta for a year and a half when I met my wife in Whistler, and she's from California, and that's what brought me here, so I'm in all around. Sweet. Now, um... What are the uh, what's a hockey team in Ontario? Uh, the Leafs, Toronto Maple Leafs. Wait, wait I'm sorry, I, you mispronounced it. Isn't it the Maple Laughs? Ah! <laughs> well, it's funny to you because you didn't have to watch them for all those years when they sucked. <laughs> yeah, I'm from Detroit, so I I'm from Detroit, so I lucked out with that one. Uh, Stevie Eiserman, I miss him. Yeah, it's funny. You guys sell out or the 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 Maple the Maple Laughs, correct name. <laughs> Politically correct name. They sell out every year. Yeah, it's all corporate. When's the last? All, thing? When's the last, Is it all corporate? Yeah, uh, yeah. That place sold out every night. It's all corporate. Everyone buys up tickets to give to their clients. Yep. When did? Uh, when's the last time they uh, they won? Was it '67? Yeah, something like that. Now Hamilton, where I'm from, we, we were this close to getting a team. We almost got the Pittsburgh Penguins. And then Mario Lemieux came along and saved the Penguins. But we were this close to having the Pittsburgh Penguins move to Hamilton. But uh, Buffalo uh, Sabers were going to boycott that because they didn't want because they get they get a lot of fans come down across the border. Oh, and who uh, who are the Flyers from? That they're Pennsylvania, right? No, Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Oh, okay, Philadelphia. Okay, Philadelphia. Hey, you know our our fellow uh, colleague Jess Mary is a huge Flyers fan. Uh, what's the Giant what's the door. team in Hawaii? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I don't know the the fly the flying Hawaiians. Flying Hawaiians, yeah, that would work. <laughs> okay, now so basically, what I want to get you on the podcast is to talk, kind of give us um, a background, and we can segue into 
about the talk you're going to be doing at HypnoThoughts. Okay. Absolutely. Um, so this year, um, uh, I'm going to be doing a three-day post-conference class on my smoking cessation program. So my overarching um, point of view on hypnosis is that there's a lot of really good hypnotists out there uh, that do really great work, but they're not making a lot of money, um, except for some that go into training or into the educational system who teach other hypnotists who don't make a lot of money. And I really want to change that. <laughs> and for myself, I you know I quit um, a, a corporate job to go into hypnosis because uh, my wife was pregnant with my daughter at the time, and I wanted I didn't want to be working 12, 14 hours a day commuting into San Francisco. I wanted to be able to make my own schedule, to be around for the important moments of our life, and I wanted to, and that that was my motivation for going into hypnosis and adding that to my um, to my kind of my, my my list of things that I do. Um, but I, I, if I was going to do that, I need to make money at it, and so I need to treat my hypnosis like a business, and that. Um, I think really c contradicts with some people's belief systems that if you're doing really, really good work and you're really helping people and making a difference in their lives... You're doing somehow, God's work. Yeah, God's work. Somehow it's wrong to charge for that or it's wrong to, to, to make a good living at that and they sabotage themselves or they want to give it away or they, or they just don't have the business background to treat it like a business. So, you know, so what I did was I, I went in and, and specialized. And I decided I was going to do smoking cessation. And I wanted to become the very best that I could possibly be at, at one thing. And I did it and did it and did it. And, you know, for the first four years of my career, I didn't really even um, take a lot of trainings or meet other hypnotherapists. I was just focused in on becoming the best smoking cessationist I could possibly be. Um, fast forward a little bit. I've got um, – I've helped over 4,000 people stop smoking in one session – no drugs, no withdrawal, and a lifetime guarantee. Uh, that means if they ever pick up a cigarette for any reason, the craving ever comes back, they come in for free. The reason I can afford to give away free sessions to all of my clients for the rest of their lives is because only 5 to 10% of my clients ever require a second session. So I can do that. And and I charge five ninety five per session. Um, so... I've been able to almost reverse my work week because when you're when you when you in the, in for the for the smoking clients they'll happily pay five or six hundred dollars to quit smoking because they're spending two thousand dollars a year to smoke. That's per year. That's twenty thousand over the next ten years to smoke. They'll happily pay five or six hundred dollars to stop if you can you know follow through and actually give them what they came for. And that's with you know virtually everyone who comes into my office stops. And if they have any difficulty, I'll work with them until they're completely satisfied. So now, I think. I've, go ahead. I, was say, I think your math. I, I think your math actually might be wrong. I think it's way more than two thousand. I'm thinking it's closer to like. It might be closer to like. I think I did the math. I think almost around four thousand. Well, in Hawaii, yeah, those cigarettes are expensive out there, especially. Yeah, depending on yeah, where you're 40, buying. Them. Forty thousand. Forty thousand in ten years. Yeah, very expensive. And that's not to mention, you know, the, the burns on the clothes and the health care costs and the breath mints and the dry cleaning and, you know, and those the sick days that people take and just feeling lousy and smelling bad. Um, so there's there's a lot of motivation for for people to come see me. Now, unfortunately, the, the when they, by the time they get to see me, it's their last resort. They've tried everything else, and they have no idea how easy it could be. Well, what I've done is I've made... My process, very everything that I do in my process is purposeful, um, and so it, and, and it's systematic, and therefore it's duplicatable. And in my hey, program, me. hey Ken, sorry for interrupting. I think I see your tail wagging around behind you. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. I just saw, I saw your little <laughs> your tail wagging. This is Gracie. No, no, I'm sorry. Gracie's a little shy on the camera. Does she, does she help? Uh, does the cat help with your sessions? Uh, no, I do my sessions in my office. This is just strictly for the family. <laughs> okay, we were talking about your. Uh, you you said you created them out. The sessions purposeful. Yeah, so that makes it uh, very duplicatable. And so what I do in the, uh, what I do is I teach my smoking cessation class, and I teach everything: the hypnosis, 
I combine the most advanced hypnosis techniques with a neurological process to clear the cravings from the mind and the body. It's really a kind of a two-step. And the, the pre-talk that I used to set the whole thing up to win, uh, the, you know, the initial reading, creating rapport uh, very easily with the client. So I, everything that I do, I teach and um, so that they can get the, the same results that I'm getting with, with my clients. Um, and I teach it in a way so that so that someone can get out there and, and be earning five ninety five per session, uh, helping people stop smoking. Even if you earn half of that, it's still a lot of money. Yeah, or double that would be even more money. Exactly. I like how you think without having all that hair. Without having all that hair there, you. I don't know. I was gonna go with some kind of joke, but I just totally fell flat on that one. <laughs> I had something in my head, but it disappeared. <laughs> no, I was oh, going to say, too. so... What was that? <laughs> me too. <laughs> no, um, so the, your class, it's going to be... I'm getting... It's going to be the 18th to the 20th in August, right? Uh, no, it's a post-conference class. So it'll be the... Oh, okay, my bad, my bad. 24th, 25th. 20, yeah. So the 24th to the 26th in August. Yeah, so you know, Scott asked me to do a two-day post-conference class, and and I, a couple of weeks later, I I, I call contacted him. I said, you know what, I could give tips on how to help improve your practice and the smoking cessation for a couple of days, and I and but I really don't know what value the other hypnotists would get from that. It it would be helpful, but you know, in terms of how to charge for it and what they'd get, I said, you know what, I prefer to do is give them everything. The like all, the, the marketing, the practice management, the hypnosis, the neurological, to give them all of it, I could give them uh, some of it a, ahead of time in video form and then have some follow-up afterward, but I would prefer to teach the whole class. And that's something that Hypnothots has never done before, is offer a course at, of this, at this, uh, uh, you know, this magnitude or level. So what I not normally do is I charge $6,000 for the, for the whole class. Which you know, which sounds like a, a lot compared to the other classes people take at Hypnothots. It's really you know, your first ten clients would pay for the entire uh, learn the entire process. Well, what I've done is I've offered a forty percent discount. I've never ever discounted this program before, but just as so, this is a Hypnothots Live exclusive, and uh, we talked it over. And we thought this would be a really good idea, and the first five people uh, who register also get their Hypnothots Live conference paid for as well. So that's a uh, other three hundred nineteen dollar uh, savings right there, but I want wow. to give all of it plus the follow up support so the people can have a turnkey practice, go in specialize. So this is really different because most people, when they take a, a pre post conference class at something like Hypno Thoughts, which is I think the very best out there, um, they're looking to learn something new. They're looking to round out their skill set, uh, learn some new techniques, find new ways to help their clients. Well, what I'm really offering is the opposite. The opposite of that. I really want people to. Are, I'm looking. We're limiting the class to 12. So I'm looking for people to really want to hone their skills to be the very best at one thing, so that they can. Because if you get a reputation in your in your own community of being the very best at one aspect of something, and do that and do that and do that, you'll you you the people will be a path to your door. Oh, indeed, indeed. Um, you know, Craig. You know, Craig Eubanks. Craig Eubanks talks a lot about you know niche it down. I know some I've gone to some people's uh, practice websites, and I'll look at the page and they've got like 20 different things they can help with. It's almost like when you look at a um, if you let's say if you look at a newspaper that's just completely filled with stuff. There's no white space there. There's no negative space. Take rid that's of right. everything else and, and be like, hey, I do this. I specialize in this. Yeah, and people think they're they're turning money away if they if they don't list everything that they do. And I, I found the exact opposite to be true. Make a re reputation for one thing, and then my business has been 100% referral for over four years now. And so now when people contact me back, well, can you help me with weight loss? Can you help me with um, anxiety with this or that? I say absolutely I can. But I made my reputation in one thing, built it to be 100% referral, so people will book themselves in online or by phone. Uh, they show up, I show up, and then and then as people contact afterward, then absolutely open yourself up to these other things. But make a reputation for yourself and be the very best at something first. That's brilliant. Now, if you don't mind me asking, how much uh, money will this set people back? 
Well, for, with a 40% discount, uh, that would be 3600 So 3600 So, folks, um, let me see if I can do some math in my head. I'm not, as you know, I'm not too good at math. We were trying to figure out the time zone change yesterday. Seven. Dark, you do the, do the math. Do the math. You do the math. Okay. You idiot. I, I wonder what you're doing. So you said 3600 So, folks, if you, let's say, if you spent more than, I guess, $8,000 on any kind of training in the past, this, no, no, no. If you spent more than, I guess, $10,000 on any kind of seminars or training in the past, this class is probably going to feel, it's probably going to be a value, at least like a, a $7,000 value. It's only going to cost you 3600 And for the first five people, take one finger away, first yep. five people are basically getting their registration paid. That's right. And your first six clients will pay for the entire education. And then you'll be, you know, earning a, a very healthy six-figure income from there on, then on. And that's what if they, what if they, what if they double, and they make it twelve hundred dollars? So it'd be the first three clients. <laughs> well, that's possible too. I, you know, it's funny because I've had clients, you know, when, when, in talking about the price, five ninety-five. I used to get when I advertised on radio and and did that. I, I tell the, every people all the things I do for marketing and all the things that worked really well and then stopped working and all the mistakes I made. So that people can just go right in and learn from the from the, all my mistakes as well as all the things that work. Um, but some people would say, "Hey, that's a lot of money," and I explain to them. You know, I, I wouldn't even tell them the price anymore. They say, "They ask me uh, how much does it cost your program cost to quit smoking." I say, two months worth of cigarettes." I say, "Oh, that makes sense." And then some people say, "That's really inexpensive," and because some of my clients have gone to you know Arizona to some you know two week. Um, you know, exclusionary place where they you know try and get rid of all their cravings and it's, some people spend tens of thousands of dollars trying to stop and you know wow. five or six hundred dollars to quit is nothing to them especially with, with all the money they're spending to quit smoking or to, to actually smoke hey folks that right there is brilliant uh, that's a real good way to market instead of saying it's uh, 599 to quit smoking you can tell them it's two months it's basically two months of cigarettes and I I know that because I'm actually a smoker I quit a couple times the last time I quit was um, before Mar before March of last year, and we had a uh, sort of smoke again after our old roommate passed away. So I just kind of stressed out, and I gotta get back in the habit of not smoking. I have to get back in the habit of not smoking. Anyhow, I know I know it, where he's coming from about the about telling people it's, uh, two months of uh, cigarettes. Because as a smoker, if somebody were to if somebody were to come up to me and be like, "Hey, give me four thousand dollars to smoke for the year," I'd be like, "You can." No, go away. It's a lot of money. But if they're like, hey, give me $10, it, 10 bucks is isn't that much. So 10 bucks a day is not that much money. It's still a lot of money, but you don't really perceive it as a lot. So if you frame it that way and say, hey, it's two months of cigarettes, they are like, no, that's not too bad. No. If you tell them and 600 yeah. bucks right off the bat, it scares them. Right. And then the only thing you need to do then is follow through on what you promised. So, you know, I, I, it's a piece of free advice. Any hypnotherapist that's out there that's thinking of themselves as to how much they charge per hour, you need to let that go. What is the value that you're giving your client? You know, because that's what they're paying for. Now, the other side of that is you need to be able to follow through. You need to have a very, very high success rate if you're going to charge that type of money. So you, so you need to follow up. You need to be the very best at something, and then you can easily charge that type of money, and people will happily pay it. And refer their friends and family to you. Oh yeah, definitely. Don't don't be fleecing people. Don't offer them. You know, there's certain people in our field that offer magical cures, say they can cure cancer, do this and do that and do that. I'm like, dude, that's so horrible. You you got to stay within with our limits. I mean, there's been a couple times I've actually I've done a couple <laughs> sessions with people that I should never have touched. One being trauma, and I just I quickly learned my lesson. You got to know your scope of practice <clears throat> and just be honest with people. Absolutely, absolutely, and by, and by offering the lifetime guarantee, people really get that I care about about them and their success, and I don't want someone to have to think about, should I pay another session to come see Ken again? No, you don't have to think about it. It's free. Get back in here. If you ever need help, I'm here for you, um, and when pe people get that, they, they, they will come back in because I, I was really amazed in working with smokers how much guilt and shame they carry. And when people, I've got hundreds of video testimonials, Yelp reviews, and, and all these things, and, and I was amazed in, in doing those video testimonials 
how many of them said how important it was that they didn't feel judged in the session. They didn't feel like they were a bad person for smoking. I had no idea that that was such a big deal to them. Oh no, as a as a smoker, I could see that because it's essentially, I guess, in this day and age, it's they're almost like a like an out, like an outcast. You know, the bars you can't smoke at the bars anymore. It stinks. Um, all the commercials. You know, like a lot of younger kids, I guess, are being. Pro it's good that the you know, they're they're programming the younger kids like, hey, it's a bad habit, don't do it. But I mean, you you'll definitely get looks. Smoking is up with the younger kids. One in three college kids are smoking now. And then uh, you have the you had the vape, who and they, they don't even claim to help you stop smoking. It's just you know, hey, you know, buy your little nicotine packets from us instead of buying it from the tobacco companies. So um, it's, you know, the overall smoking is up even with all the public awareness. So it's a really wonderful thing to be able to help save lives. I just got a birthday wish from one of my very first clients. Um, she's in she's in Australia. We met at a conference I was speaking at in uh, Panama City, Panama. And um, after the after my talk, she she ran up and said, "I I heard in your introduction you can help people stop smoking. Will you help me stop smoking?" Actually, her and seven others. So I spent the whole next day. I was supposed to be by the pool. We just went one after another after another, and we one after another. We did the, all seven of them. And uh, the the hotel staff loved me because I I have people bring their last pack in and throw it in my waste bin. Well, these people just went through duty free, so they had cartons. I had stacks of cartons this high beside the garbage bin in my hotel room. But um, that was eight years ago, and I just got a birthday wish from her saying, "Thank you so much, you and my husband. You saved our lives." Um, and people really hold it that way. You're 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 saving lives. You're improving the quality of people's lives. If you could look at what someone someone's life would look at, like 20 years later, you could do a snapshot of each. Uh, someone who frees themselves of smoking, someone continues to smoke, I bet you'd hardly recognize those two people. Their energy level, the grayness in their skin, um, you know, whether they're living their life or whether they're kind of hoofing it and feeling tired and hanging out on the couch. It's really a big difference. Oh, yeah. Now, if you could, um, I don't know how much, if you can do this in the amount of time we have, is it possible you can give me a rundown, I guess, of how a typical session is or... or or do you? Or your such is not that typical. I, I'm sure you have to change it for each individual client. Well, yes, I can, I can run it down basically because everything that I do is very carefully scripted in terms of the process. Now within that, there's lots of room. It's and, and this is for a smoking cessation session. In any other hypnos hypnosis I do is not scripted at all. I just meet the person where they are. But for the smoking cessation, I find it really unique in that. Most of my smokers, when they come in, they, they're not really even open to hypnosis. They're not particularly new agey. They're not um, uh, particularly health conscious. Uh, so they're, what they needed was a process that would take them from where they are and walk them through step by step by step. So, when first, so first of all, when people come in to see me, these people are all nervous and anxious. They've tried everything and failed. Their confidence is low. They're like, what the hell? Might as well try this too. That's what they're coming in with, and that's where I meet them. And, and you just, you know, we, we need to have them feel comfortable, feel rapport, make sure that they're not being judged and they're okay. So I, I show people, you know, how I break the ice with that. Usually I use a little bit of humor, but also I want to build my credibility up with them right away. So I do a little test with them neurologically and um, just to make sure that I can work with them neurologically and uh, with some arm testing and some tapping and things. And most of them have never ever heard of muscle testing or anything like that. So immediately they're seeing something's happening with their body and they're, and they're blown away that's, that's, that this is working. Something's happening already and my credibility goes up with them. Then I take them to another room and I used to do my pre-talk live, but now I have them watch a video which starts to save my voice because seeing nine clients a day uh, working, you know, those hours and just gabbing without a break, I started losing my voice, so I had to start working smarter. So I used technology, kind of like you're doing with these uh, web web uh, cast uh, uh, interviews. So um, I have them watch that, and while they're building rapport with me, um, I'm in the other room working with another client. Um, so it allows me to double my time as well. Um, so, but in the in the video uh, pre-talk. I'm interrupting patterns, I'm building rapport with them, I'm uh, creating a ex positive expectation, I'm doing all the things that are going to set them up to win 
in the actual session. Then I take them into another room and work with your, their neurological system for about 10 minutes because their system wants to keep them smoking the way they are right now. It does not want to change. We identify the problem, reverse it, and clear it. And they're actually a non-smoker before they ever sit in the chair for the hypnosis. The body clearly indicates it, they feel it, and they know it. It's an amazing thing to experience firsthand. And then we do the hypnosis. Of course, that's just like listening to me tell them the story, and we all know the hypnotic part. But imagine what it would be like to do your hypnosis sessions with your client knowing that the change has already occurred. So what happens is that they, they already feel like a non-smoker. Their cravings are gone. Their confidence level is way up. They're relaxed. They don't, they're not worried about it so much. What does that do? That makes the hypnosis session work better. So they're relaxed. They're not worrying about it. They're, the suggestions for the, for the hypnosis side are going through. It's really like a one-two punch to clear the cravings from, cravings from the mind and the body. So everything, everything, everything that I do in a session is setting the client up to win and to win and to win. Um, then when we're finished the session, uh, we do a couple of other tests, and um, I set up an expectation of what they should expect, which I covered in the pre-talk, but I also re review um, at the end, and uh, let them know that just the way you know they were referred to me by someone else, that's how my business works. Um, so go out and be successful, show yourself how easy it is, and then let other people know how easy it was for you. And I, um, I, I have a little program for referrals uh, to say thank you for people who refer, just a little something to say thank you. It's nothing really, really special, but you know what? It's, it means something to them that I take the time to say thank you. Um, and with that approach, um, I, don't, I haven't done any marketing, no pay-per-click, nothing uh, for over four years now, and, you know, and I have as much business as, uh, as, as I can handle. So you said, uh, what's your typical uh, workload? Are you doing, what, 7 to 10, 11 clients? Um, in a day? Yeah. Um, in a day, typically, um, well, I've kind of reversed my work week recently because uh, we just moved to another city. We had a brand new big house we had to kind of furnish. We had a brand new baby um, that, I, that I wanted to be around for. So I see clients two or three days a week. But at 5.95 per session, if I'm seeing even four or six clients in a day, that's a two, three, four thousand dollar work week. Um, wow, that's a really that's a really good work week. And then, so then I get to focus on the, the North American Academy of Hypnosis. So being able to teach and train, you know, basic hypnosis and the smoking cessation program. I'm working on a couple of books. I get to be around with my young children. My, my son, Xander, is two, just about to turn three. And my daughter, Sarah, is uh, seven, about to turn eight. So I, what I love about hypnosis is I can take the summers off. I can take December off for Christmas. I can, and when you're making the type of money you can take, take time off, you can have more intimate relationships with your family. I, feel, I don't feel burnt out because I'm seeing a few clients a week and, and so I can really focus in on being the very best for those clients. So again, everything compounds and amplifies and magnifies on itself. So I feel very, very blessed. We were, we were talking just before you hit the record button. Um, before I came to Hypnothots, you know, we, we went to we went to Europe. We went to uh, Kauai for ten days. I was in Ontario visiting my family for ten days. And when I got to Hypnothots on the Saturday morning, I had just gotten back from Kauai. Um, and I was on one hour sleep, <laughs> and then we stayed up with Scott and Richard and everyone until three a.m. Um, oh. It was pretty crazy. But yeah, I think. Uh, go ahead. No, I was say, I'm trying to do the math. I'm pretty sure that I think I was in uh, um, Vegas right when you were finishing your vacation off here. Oh yeah. And pretty something like that. Yeah. How how do you like the chickens over here? Oh. <laughs> They're everywhere. That's pretty wild. You know what? I hear you know what's funny. Not very good eating, though. No. Oh God, no. No. The joke here is that you take a chicken, you take a lava rock, boil them. Lava rock is more tender. <laughs> but the funny thing is, is I get a lot of people. If I do street hypnosis, um, I haven't really done it much lately. A lot of you know, of course, you know a question. You're gonna make me cluck like a chicken. And I just tell people, I'm like, come on, seriously, look around. Um, we have enough of those things. And then they laugh. I'm like, no, it doesn't work that way. I say absolutely, but I charge extra for that. 
<laughs> I want to tell people, like, honestly, if I do, you think I would come up with something more interesting than that? I'm sorry, what were you saying just before that? Time off. So you're basically you're basically talking about how you have you make a lot of you're making good money. Yeah, you forgot you're making good money. To where you're able to travel everywhere. Well, and I and I don't I, I only I only say that to make it relevant in that I want to convey a message to whoever's watching this. There's no reason why you can't duplicate what I'm doing and get the same results. That's the only thing that's relevant. Um, my um, my process is systematic, and I'm going to teach you step by step. I have all the scripting for the hypnosis. That's the easiest part. The uh, the neurological has a process that clears the cravings very very quickly from somebody, and I find by combining the two together, it's like a one two punch. The cravings have nowhere to go, so when they leave the session. They're, they know that it worked. They, here's what was happening in the past, and I've, and I've talked about this at other trainings and conferences. I'd get the most um, really interesting emails. Um, Ken, I was so pissed off at you. I was like, what's this going to be about? I left your office, and I got ripped off for $600. My arm wasn't heavy. It didn't work. I, I didn't wasn't hypnotized. And I was just about to tell my wife how I got ripped off for $600, and I realized I forgot to smoke all the way home. Well, that's weird. Well, let's see what happens the next day. And then they, they the next day they get up, they drink the coffee, they run off to work, they realize they forgot their cigarette with their coffee, and they forgot to smoke on the way to work. So I get these really interesting emails, but what was common among each of them was they didn't know when they left my office if anything had happened or not. Okay, And they were looking for out there to prove to them that something happened in here. And that was my motivation for creating this process. I wanted people to have a visceral experience in my office that something changed. And since I do that before the hypnosis, they just relax into the session. It just, again, everything compounds on everything. But my clients walk out of the office absolutely certain that they're a non-smoker. And it's a wonderful way for someone to experience uh, this type of transformative change because they're not stressed or concerned or nervous or worried about uh, what's going to happen when they walk out the door. They already know the change happened. Oh, did you freeze up? Oh, hi, um, everybody. It's now the Ken Guzzo webcast. Hi. I don't know if <laughs> Antonio's coming back. I don't know if I'm still being recorded, but I'll just uh, maybe I'll just tell some jokes. Hey, buddy, are you there? Hello, <laughs> Antonio. Uh -oh. I think we'll probably edit this part out so I can just... <laughs> so where were we when my connection cock out on me? I don't know. This is incredibly unprofessional. I can't work under these conditions. I know. I can't either. <laughs> <laughs> God, I, you know, I love the Canadian humor. Oh, okay. now, if, now, if we could just did, if we could just teach most of the Canadians to learn how to tip in a restaurant, that would be brilliant. <laughs> well, <laughs> but it's uh, different. It's different. I found out it's actually different it's, in every province. Canadians are used to being in canoes. We do our best not to tip. You see, that's the problem. We're trained from exactly. youth. Exactly. <laughs> well, I've heard of a more. I've heard of a much worse version. I'm making you talking about. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say. Water. <laughs> the what? They're both what freaking close to water. Do you know that one? Which one? Um, Amer uh, drinking American beer is like having sex in a canoe. Why is that? They're both close to water. <laughs> I, I had this Australian. Or I, no, I think it was a Canadian. Is either? Or no, I think it was a Canadian guy. He's like, so what? He's like, is your beer finally up to four percent yet? And I'm like, haha, funny. <laughs> But but the thing is like you know that the one stuff I can't stand I mean I I never liked Labatt's because it used to give me it used to give me headaches and then uh, Molson Molson Triple X motor oil ugh <laughs> it's a motor oil it's so gross all right well I don't know where I was because uh, I was gabbing away and your face was frozen so I just kept on talking and <laughs> I didn't know, you know if we oh it might have recorded it, so that hopefully that it recorded it. so yeah. folks. KenGuzo.com, that would be him, 
htlive.com or is it .net? No, it's canguzohtlive.com. Oh, I thought you meant okay. Now I okay. I thought you meant Ken Guzo and HT Live. Okay, so Ken Guzo, HTLive dot com. If you're interested in registering for that class, I'll, and I'll tell you something. You know, the reason you want to come to my class is like, there's there's going to be fantastic trainers from all over the world, and that's awesome. But you know, a lot of these guys, you can't freaking understand a word they're saying because they talk in these funny accents. Like, get me a point, mate. Like that Rory guy and the. Yeah. What the hell are they talking about? Uh, Martin Peterson, he's the worst. No wonder you can put someone in a trance in 30 seconds because That's you're so trying to figure out what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even impersonate him. Whoa, what's he saying? What's he talking about? Now, if some guy named Igor walks up to you, you know some weird shit's going to happen. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You've, you've met Igor before, right? I've never met him in person. Yeah, really, really cool guy. I interviewed him t- 2010 when I was on the um, the Queen Queen Mary boat. And believe it or not, when you have a bunch of hypnotists on a boat that people think is haunted, you can get some uh, people really freaked out. Uh huh. Uh huh. I hypnotized this kid. His uh, Mexican guy. His name was Jesus, and I'm guessing he might have been Catholic. You know, a lot of Catholics have the just the belief system from Catholicism. Oh, we. I remember I gave him uh, hallucinations. He thought the boat was haunted. He almost started to run outside and grab him. But I don't come on, come to. I don't need to fly over the side of the boat. <laughs> it was, it just, awesome. kid was a, he was a class A somnambulist flopper. You could just be like sleeping, his whole body would be like bleep, just fall over like a puddle of mud. <laughs> oh, it, it, when I'm doing street hypnosis and I find people are somnambulists, like like the actual droppers, I'm like, oh, this is gonna be good. That, that's well, I'll the best. be at the IHF conference next week, and it's going to be on a ship uh, going down to Mexico. So I'm looking well, which to conference that. is that? The IHF. Uh, is that um, Otto's conference? Or- that's uh, International Hypnosis Federation. Shel- Dr. Oh, Shelley Stockwell is that's president right, of that. Stockwell. Yeah, sorry, so, uh, sorry Shelley. Uh, came say, Sally, Sally sells seashells by a seashore. <laughs> sorry, Shelley. Ah, there goes there goes my list. She forgives you. I'm sure she does. I she, she's a wonderful she's person. Awesome. She forgives you. You, you ever see that video when uh, <laughs> you ever see that video when um, uh, Martin, you know the guy that just you can't understand, just speaks too fast, and you, you kind of get bored, and you're like, ah, I close my eyes. Let, let me pretend I'm going to hypnosis. <laughs> you see the video when he hypnotized uh, Scott and uh, Shelley? I was there. Oh, I was, how was that? It, it was awesome. He, uh, yeah, it was. That was quite a, a, a showdown that was going to happen. But that was that was a really cool conference. That's the year I met both both Martin and uh, Scott Salen and myself. We were the three re- recipients of the IHF Award of, of Excellence that year, and each for our own category. For mine, for healthcare. Martin for training, and uh, uh, Scott for communication. I think. And um, so I, I was at. Go ahead. Sorry for interrupting. They did, you mean they didn't give the communicate the award for communication to Martin because we can understand him so well? I don't know why not. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, Martin. <laughs> so anyway, uh, it's, it, so I was asked if I would make balloon animals and dress up like a clown for the dinner that night because it, the theme was circus, and I'm a member of the board of advisors. Shelley asked me if I do it. I said sure. But then I go up, and then I, my name gets called that I was a, a recipient of this award. So I'm, like, I'm out there up with a big freaking um, balloon hat with a chicken in it, big clown boots and clown costume, horn hawk and big red nose. And then Martin and Scott had to get their picture taken beside me. <laughs> oh, I need you got to send me that picture. <laughs> I think that the picture's been destroyed. I, I never got a copy of that. <laughs> that definitely elevates our elevates our image in the world, right? <laughs> Well, that was that's that's how I met the two of them. <laughs> I'm sure that was great. Boy, I have a feeling that because of you, I'm gonna have to watch out. I'm gonna have to watch out for Martin. Who else? I'm gonna have to watch out for. Well, I mean, you gotta watch out for the Brits, anyhow. What's his name? Um, Carl likes to play grab ass with everybody. Very. I don't know if he he's very touchy feeling. Uh, someone took his. Someone someone stole his cell phone last year. Oh, I. Do remember that? Yeah, 
So he didn't come out with us, but um, he was. Yeah, he had to. He had to get some things handled. Yeah, yeah I'm sure he did a lot of uh, grab ass handling. <laughs> I felt bad. I remember, and then, yeah, that that was horrible. Mm. That was horrible. Because I think he. I remember he had plugged it in by behind the AT. No, that was right after the. Um, I think uh, McBride show. That's what it was. Yeah. I mean, you, you saw McBride, right? That was an unbelievable show. Yeah, it, the, all the entertainment was amazing last year. Now, here's the other thing. Um, uh, Richard Clark called me up uh, a couple weeks ago and asked me if I do 30 minutes of stand-up comedy on the Saturday night. Oh, do you do stand-up? Yeah, well, I'm no, but I'm going to. <laughs> I said I have to think oh. about it. And then I called. I sent him a message at 3 in the morning and I said, okay, I'll do it. You might um, want to get a shield, so just in case we start throwing stuff. I, I embrace that. Perfect. <laughs> hey, you know, it doesn't matter. You're Canadian. You're going to tell us all sorry. Sorry. Sorry I suck. No re no refunds. <laughs> <laughs> sorry I suck. No refunds. I got well, your money. I asked. I said, so why why me? And they said, uh, Richard said, they were absolutely certain I'd make the second act look fantastic. So I'm really <laughs> trust that they've placed in me. I'm really honored. Is that, is that really what he said? No. <laughs> okay. But he, he was he was secretly thinking it. And you're like, okay, I see what's going on here. You know, he was thinking that though. So I. Yeah, Richard. Every all these these mischievous little people. So everybody, Ken Guzzo, htlive.com. That guy right there. You probably see his bald head up right there. That little window right there. Put your put your hands up here, <laughs> or you put your hands up. Yeah, I'll. Uh, like here, man, wider. Yeah, the website's right there. You click that link right there, it'll go right to. You should have your mouth open like that. It looks really bad. You're like showing size. <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> click that link. <laughs> click that link. Oh man, you need you need to come that? with a closet. You're magic. You're magic, man. How do you do that? I don't know. I would just be joking all the time. Huh. No, Nick, how did you make that box come up? That was awesome. Oh. Miracle. Well, if you, uh, you know, talk about mischievous. I'm gonna do one last little one. Um, I know you saw the video earlier when um, our buddy Martin, which we uh, we so el eloquently made fun of earlier. Remember when mm -hmm. he dropped me like a rock? Do me a favor. Yeah. Uh, put your uh, hands up and make a little box, and I'll let people see that induction. Make sure you cover your, uh, your oh, ugly oh. mug. Perfect. <laughs> keep it simple. K I S S. Keep it simple, stupid. Dude, this is a great interview, and I think um, a good way to finish out the interview since <laughs> we're in Vegas. Can I say something? Yeah. Just, just a different thing, because we kind of been, you know, working back and forth with a lot of fun stuff, and you guys been seeing some some stage stuff, eh? So, I brought this paper, and we can do some fun stuff with the paper, like just look at it, just like that, all the way down, deeper, 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 deeper. Thanks for this little interview. It was great, amazing. When you wake up on the count of three, you feel amazing, and you know you just did a good interview. One, two, three, just like that. You knew that, that was awesome. <laughs> I, you, you knew I was going to ask you for an induction, but that was good. So I'll have this on pause and watch a video. Okay, that's good. You can pull your hands on now. So everybody, get to the conference. It's unbelievable. Oh, last thing I forgot to mention, because I am a rambler. I know, but wait, there's more. They're, they've got it's six months interest-free financing. You That's right. But you don't have to pay at the conference if you're one of the first five people that register with him. That's right. And if anybody wants to take my class, just pay a deposit and you can pay the rest in July when you come to the conference. We'll settle up then. So, uh, yeah, let's make it really easy for people that really want to um, make a career out of hyp hypnosis and really want to you know, make a wonderful living while they're helping people and saving lives. I'm still laughing, guys. You're you're one of the funnier guys I've had on here. Well, I would do um here knuckle bump. I will see you in. Perfect. Just make sure you don't break your screen. I will see you soon, everybody. Definitely get to the conference. It's uh this August the 21st to the 23rd, right? Yeah, that would be three days. The 21st yep. to the 23rd. And let's say if you're still on the fence. Go to HT Live, I'm sorry, no, HypnoThoughtsLive.com and get some education.
That's right. The 22nd is my wife's birthday, and I'm coming. I'm in so much trouble. So if I can be there, you can be there. Oh, I did hear about that. Did you hear about that? <laughs> yeah, I think you posted about it. It's your wife's birthday. Oh. Yeah, what, did, oh. what did she do to deserve an angel like you? Uh, I, what did I do to deserve her? She's amazing. She, But I've never missed a birthday, but I'm going to miss this one. But it'll be fun. Okay. So you know, I'm after, missing after, it up for her ahead of time. After I uh, hit stop broadcast, you can definitely say that you can tell the truth and say you're the angel. We don't want the evidence on uh, film, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was great talking to everybody. I will see everybody there. Take care.